So again, today's topic is going to be uh, rethinking your relationship goals. Today I'm talking uh, about rethinking your relationship goals. Not just marital relationships or, or romantic partnerships, but all types of relationships. Friendships, parent-child relationships, client relationships, patient relationships, on and on, okay? All kinds of relationships we're talking about today. More likely, more than likely, you've been thinking about your relationships all wrong, and I'm here to help today. First two relationship goals that I want to talk about today kind of work hand in hand. Uh, you can't have one without the other, so keep that in mind as I talk through this. The number one problem most people have in a relationship uh, is that they allow that relationship to consume them. They no longer an individual. Uh, they start to become a copy of the other person. They, they become someone who is defined by their partnership instead of someone who draws strength from it. Uh, I remember one of the first books, hey, you guys can't see it. Excuse me as I step out of screen. One of the first books, self-help books, I ever read, not one of the first self-help books. This is the book. This is, was 17 when I wrote it. So this is a 30-year-old book, uh, this book right here. Uh, highlighted and still all my high school writings in there. Uh, senior in high school when I read that book. Uh, and it talks about dependence, independence, and interdependence. Uh, so being dependent on somebody else, finding a place where you become independent, and then having interdependent, where you're both individuals, but you draw strength from each other. Um, that's the type of relationship you really want to shoot for, and that's a great book to read. Uh, although it's not a, a relationship book, it certainly is a great book to read as far as that one um, section is concerned. Now, uh, I'm not saying that you should never change uh, in becoming, in, in not turning into somebody else. Part of what is wonderful about a really great relationship is the evolution that you undergo together. I mean, but. At the same time, you don't want to stop being a unique and interesting individual. And I talk about this again uh, as far as relationships are concerned, again, romantic or whatever, but I often find this in, in coaching, client relationships, doctor-patient relationships. Um, one of the things that I always talk about with my clients who have been with a whole bunch of other coaches is that those, one of the reasons they didn't work out with those other coaches is because those coaches wanted them to become like them. Those coaches say, hey, here's how I did things. And if you do them too, you'll be successful. Uh, and my clients weren't willing to give up what made them individuals in order to become that person. So it didn't work out for them. Now, the clients that that coach has that will, are willing to do that, they work out great with. But I tend to do a, a much more individualized coaching. Not wasn't trying to sell my coaching here, but uh, more individualized coaching where I want to work with the individual. I want our relationship to be such that neither one of us le loses what makes us individuals. My client, uh, as an individual doctor, having a way that they wanna do things, I wanna make sure that I enhance that, not try to change that into the way I would have done things if I were in their situation. It makes them a more interesting individual, uh, makes me a more interesting coach. Uh, so again, that type of concept goes across all kinds of relationships. So your first relationship goal should be to continue your individual path of discovery. Uh, even as you travel along that path with a partner, uh, whoever that might be. So again, in a business coaching relationship, obviously you travel along the path, but you want to keep your individuality. In a sp spouse relationship, same idea. You might have goals as a, as a couple, but you want to keep developing yourself as an individual as well to make yourself a better partner uh, also. Uh, all right, second major goal we're going to talk about today is communication. If you're in a relationship, you've got to communication, c communicate more. Whether it's with your spouse, or whether it's with your kids, and any of you who have kids, you know that if you communicate very clearly what you expect from them, you often get it. Uh, the times we get frustrated when we don't communicate those expectations, they do something that a kid would do, and then we're frustrated because they didn't do what we want them to do, but we didn't communicate it well. Um, clients, patients, same idea. If we don't communicate very well with, uh, again, as, as a chiropractor, if you don't communicate very well with your patients, you don't get those expectations uh, and then you end up getting frustrated because the patient disappears but you didn't communicate very very well uh, what you expect from them and what they can get from that. Communication is perhaps the easiest relationship goal to understand but also one of the easiest to overlook. Failing to communicate can often bring resentment. Uh, it can bring along misunderstandings. Ultimately it's going to lead to relationship failures uh, if you're not communicating with that partner whoever it might be. Again going across clients, patients, kids, spouses. Uh, now, sometimes this can feel at odds with the first goal 
of, of remaining an individual. Uh, so while you're off maintaining your individuality, you, you, know, you can't forget to maintain to op- open lines of communication with your partners. A couple of things you can do is talk about your triumphs or your failures each day, uh, again, with kids or um, spouses. Seek advice from them. Um, you know, in the, the case of uh, doctor, patient, or, or client, um, coach, communicate with your clients regularly. Make them feel special. Because without them, obviously, uh, in that um, scenario, you wouldn't be in business without those people. Um, so again, uh, make sure that you're in frequent communication with whichever, whatever relationship you're trying to improve on. So then every relationship obviously hits rough patches. It happens. Uh, no matter how great relationship is or how wonderful your chemistry is with the, the person you're in a relationship with, things can come up that, that test your bond. You need to learn about your partner. You need to learn about your client. You need to learn about your patient. You need to learn about your kids. Don't just wait for your turn to talk. Uh, again, I mentioned having being an individual, uh, but in these scenarios, uh, oftentimes we want to try to change people to be like us. Uh, and, and the best idea is really to not change ourselves to be like them, but to understand them, to put ourselves in their position uh, when we are going through these challenges. Listen to what they want and what they need. Again, not just looking for your own opportunity to talk. Everyone's different. Not everyone can fit into a, you know, uh, I look at, again, some other coaches out there. Not everyone can fit into a form letter or a prepackaged persona. Uh, I know I've studied this business a lot and I've chosen not to do a lot of the things that a lot of people out there do because I don't feel, you know, everybody says to build your avatar uh, in this niche that I'm in, but I don't feel like you can talk to everybody the same. Uh, I want to be able to talk to everybody as an individual and everybody fits into that little prepackaged cookie cutter uh, persona. Again, that's for me personally. Uh, I don't want to be like a lot of other coaches that have that model that just say, here, everybody do this. I want to make sure that I work with everybody individually. And I think that's gotten me a much better relationship with my clients. You should be doing the same thing with your patients. Uh, Patients also complain about having cookie cutter treatment plans uh, with doctors. So you should be able to cater to each individual needs out there. Uh, And obviously the same thing goes for other relationships you have on a personal level too. Part of the joy of any relationship is being able to kind of step outside of your own perspective. Um, I know this is a big joy of, of having kids um, and knowing that their brain is just wired differently, right? Uh, and sometimes that can be frustrating, but I think it's one of the, one of the biggest joys about it as well, uh, is seeing them develop and seeing the perspective they come from and learning something new from your kids just about every day. Um, after that frustration, <laughs> I think most parents know I'm talking about, after that, like, uh, how, what made you think to do that? And then you start looking at it from their angle and you're like, that actually makes sense coming from them. Uh, and you learn something new and, and I've learned to be a little bit more childlike in doing so. Uh, again, this whole season's about happiness and finding what, what makes you tick. Uh, and oftentimes we learn a lot of that from our kids, right? So stop trying to squeeze everybody else into your own point of view. That's a very limiting place of being. Make sure that you're expanding your point of view by learning from other people. I mean, how can you grow and change as a person if you won't accept views outside of your own? <clears throat> Which really is our, the last relationship goal that I want to talk about today. Stop trying to force your perspective on those that are around you. Um, again, that can mean your kids or your spouse. But uh, you know, as humans, we're, we're sometimes held back by our own biology uh, to survive I know everybody just saw the rage to go paleo and, and, and to live like cavemen, but uh, you know, <laughs> that was scary times back then. And, and to survive back then as hunters and gatherers, our ancestors categorized people as either insiders or outsiders. They knew their little group, but they wouldn't let anybody else in because they didn't know, uh, you know what to expect of somebody. If, if, if anybody watches The Walking Dead, you know, same idea. When you have your little group, you don't let outsiders in because you don't know their intentions. Uh, sorry, using my own TV uh, against me there, but let's not use The Walking Dead. Just as, as cavemen, same idea. Uh, and we were, you know, evolved that way because we learned to fear what was outside of us. That instinct helped a lot when we were living in small communities and had, you know, limited social contact. But in today's connected world, we have to fight some of those basic instincts of ours. Uh, push ourselves to understand those around us, uh, connect with their way of life, expand ourselves in the process. Uh, so you can do that right now with you know, whoever's next to you, whatever patients you see today, whatever clients you see today, try to understand them and where they come from. Again, great place to practice is with your kids because it's very hard to understand where their brains are coming from and what they're thinking. 